As some of you know, I was born into an extremely Christian Kenyan family. My family speaks a tribal language from Kenya called Kikuyu. The words neodo o the waku, onahinya, onakogoshwo, tenenatene, ameni, mean, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, amen. These were the words my parents would repeat every Sunday morning with the pastor and every school night with their parents, drilled so deep into their heads that it would still be there 45 years later. The words that got them through school, collecting firewood, caring for their siblings, while their parents were out working 72 hour shifts. My parents had three kids, my brothers John and David and myself. My parents have been living in Lawrence for the past 25 years and for the last 17 and 15 with David and me. I could go on and on about my childhood from David's strict aunt-only diet when he was three all the way to now. As much as that would be, would be a way more interesting speech, I won't. So why tell you all this? These are experiences and anecdotes that make up my journey as a person, but contribute to their identity. But anyways, back to me. <laughs> Picture this. It's 6.40 a.m. and you somehow wake up heavy-eyed. You look down, turn, on the, turn off the alarm after noticing that your bonnet has somehow took a one-way trip to the other side of the room. You try to get up, but you'd fallen asleep on your arm the night before, and now there's no circulation in it. First to hang your arm over the side of your bed to get the blood flowing again, you're looking at your closet, deciding whether or not to follow dress code today. You eventually gotta get out of bed and grab your towel, soap, washcloth, and shower shoes that you wear while you are inside the shower. <laughs> Blake, please take notes. <laughs> and you go to the bathroom. Right before you get in the shower, you look in the mirror and let out a deep exhale. Stop right there. Who do you see in the mirror? Yourself, obviously, but who are you really? Those two seconds right there are my double homicide. The black man in my mirror looks back at me hesitantly and walks into the shower and gets ready for the day, leaving the gay man frozen in fear, wondering if the pressure is too high. Identity can take different forms and mean various things to many different people. To me, identity ranges whether from I'm a morning person to the color of my skin, but no matter who you are, one thing is for sure. Identity is always authentic. It is carved into your DNA, it is the roots of your family tree, and it is just as necessary as the air you breathe. You're born with it, it's preset into the world. And from a young age, I knew what I wanted to do, I knew what sport I wanted to play, where I wanted to live, where I wanted to go to school, I knew it all. This was one of my first memorable wolf and sheep's clothing experiences. While it might have been good that I had a plan for my life, let's be real, I was 10 years old and things were bound to change. This was the age at which a lot of the pieces of my life really started to connect. Understanding this world and all the prejudice that comes with it was and is my job since then, solely because of who I am. One thing I've learned over the past couple of years is that balance plays a big part in the development of your identity. I'm sure I don't speak for myself when I say that the stigma and stereotypes surrounding black men are extreme and for a long time, it felt like I needed to check off the characteristics as this, of this predetermined identity. I know, I know, it's gut-wrenching, it's terrible, it's heartbreaking, I know. But those morning when the gay man takes his step, many, as many aspects of said checklist get challenged and they disappear. They don't go together. One is heavier than the other, all of it. And now, as much as I would like to force the gay agenda upon all of you heteros, I will leave that for June. Although I'd be insane to ignore the effects that it has on the, on the balance of my identity, right? I'm sure you can look at me and tell me that I'm black. I mean, I hope so. But nobody can just look at me and say, hmm, he's a gay, right? I mean, one day the beam will be too heavy, the rope will break, and one could be put to rest. But I like them both, I cherish them both, and I love them both, inside and out. So how do I choose? The answer is I don't. Not my parents, nor their religion choose. I don't choose, nobody does. You get what you get and you don't get upset. I find my balance and wear my heart on my sleeve. That is my definition of identity. In about 30 seconds, we'll hear how touching it was to listen to me be so vulnerable and the lesson I brought to you all today. But instead, I'll save you that time by telling you what I want you to take away from all this. So I call you in. I call you in because I want you to look around and take away the indisputable fact that everybody here is fighting an invisible battle that you know nothing about, and an identity that they need to balance. And with that, happy Black History Month. We need one. <laughs>